Okay, today we're doing uh, tips and tools for serving students with learning disabilities uh, in a higher education setting. Um, I'm going to start by introducing Nina Giselli. She's system-wide director of disability services at Alliant International, as well as being a psychologist, teaching at UC Berkeley Extension and Argosy, and having a personal disability disability experience. Um, and it is out of um, her experiences in both providing and using accommodations that we uh, got our material for today. So here's um, a picture of the Alliant University Office of Accessibility Resource Center page. Uh, for students, where Nina is creating and collecting some useful resources. And I thought it was unusual in its heavy reliance on short videos. Um, Nina, how did you come up with this? Well, I came up with it in part because of my own experience with having a learning disability. And I have LD, and I also Daughter. Um, and for me, there's so much information that is in words, and that's not always the most accessible way to go. And also, as a graduate student, a lot of students have to read a lot of stuff. And if we can, pre if, if we can present that in a more accessible way, I think that that is 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 uh, especially helpful. And also, with the population that I am dealing with, which is graduate students with disabilities, they don't always want to d disclose. Maybe for a lot of them, they've been able to get the this far without asking for uh, accommodations, but grad school is especially hard. Um, so that's kind of when their compensatory strategies max out. So I also think it's really nice to have a personal touch where someone is trying to guide you through what you need to go, go through. Great. So um, your resource center has got the video orientation to your services, uh, also tells students what the accommodations are and how they can get them, and the tips for working with faculty and staff. And I thought the tips from students for other students was also kind of unique. Yeah, and um, so some of the videos are, are straight interviews where I just prop up my iPad and I and I record an interview. But others um, are emerging of sound and PowerPoint, which is then converted into YouTube. So because it's on the YouTube pl platform, um, there's able to have some flexibility in terms of where it's posted and getting the information out. And you can also caption it if it's on YouTube. Yes, and we are working on that as well. So this is your page for uh, resources for faculty, and you've also used some videos there. Yes, um, you know, our continuing ed guy on our campus is Dr. Tom Nickel, and he does a lot of online tutorials and a lot of continuing ed online. And what he says is that a lot of times people don't necessarily watch it, but maybe they fold their laundry while they live listen to a workshop. And so I wanted to have some flexibility um, in terms of how people could, could, could access information and also having a place I can point them to. Great. And so for the faculty, you've got the policies about accommodation, some tips about um, universal design uh, as a concept. And uh, also students talking to faculty about accommodations that they might need. 
and some links for assistive technology. So I thought that was really a great page. Yeah, one of the things that some of the listeners might be interested in is a friend of mine who isn't even a, a, a student here, but his name's Eric Mee, and he uses computers um, for his undergrad, and he's going to be going to graduate school school soon. And he's blind, so he uses JAWS. And so he walks through about all the windows that he has to go back and forth with in order to just quote something in an article. So it really does a good job demonstrating how long that process takes. Because I think that's something that our faculty have no idea about. So um, you've touched a little bit on the uh, challenges that come along in grad school. And you were telling me that some of the students didn't technically have a diagnosis, but because of the extra amount of reading, the challenges for organizing the information, the need to interact with the text, and the amount of writing, that might be when they discover that they have a learning disability. Yeah, and you know, and it could be LD, it could also be anxiety or some other kind of psychiatric dis disability, um, and it could be ADHD too. And you know, I've met some students who were diagnosed in third grade, but but, but their parents didn't want them to engage in that la label. Um, but nonetheless, the LD is still there. They've just learned to con compensate. But because grad school offers so many new and very intense kind of work, um, it is really hard for a lot of students to to adjust. So looking at flexibility in technology and that kind of thing is really important. Great. So some of the tools we're looking at today, um, Google Docs, especially with Read and Write, Inspiration, Win Wizard and Read Please, uh, Bookshare and with Read to Go, um, a few others, and they really range from free to fairly inexpensive. To one of them is even what I would call very expensive. Mm -hmm. So we'll leap right in to uh, Google Docs. And Google Docs has been around for a while. It now seems to be kind of known as Google Drive. Um, what we like about it is it's free. Um, when you're writing in Google Docs, your document can be access, accessed from any other computer. So if you're using your iPad to take notes um, and you need to print them out later, that makes it easy. You can share uh, your documents with other people. Um, it's great for backing up material. Um, but what we really like about it is this add-on tool that's free. So um, maybe people could raise their hand if they've already used Read and Write while I try and show you what it looks like on my computer. OK, with luck, you're seeing um, a Google Doc. I went out and found the whole text of a piece of classic literature called Vanity Fair. And Read and Write is a tab up, up there that I can access. And it gives me some additional controls. I can um, have the book read aloud. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that for you because um, there's a, some sort of interference with my sound card. Um, but it will highlight the sentence, and it will highlight each word as it reads it in a different color. It will, if I pick a word, it will give me a definition of the word. There's a picture dictionary that will attempt to give me a picture. Bustling was a little challenging for it. Um, I can translate it. it. Looks like it's going straight into Spanish there. I can. Um, another thing that I can do is if I have a bunch of highlights on the page, if I've gone through 
and highlighted things that I wanted to save. Then in the read and write tool, I can go up and collect the highlights and it will sort them by color or by whether they came first, second, or last. And then I can easily hit a button and copy this and paste it into another document to interact with it further. Let's see. Am I missing anything? Oh, Fact no, Finder I think uh, will basically, it's a way of just automatically doing a search on Google uh, for the highlighted word. So, did I get it all, Nina? Yeah, I think so. And, you know, going through our presentation, what I, 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 I noticed is how just streamlined everything is now. I think, um, you know, I've been using assistive technology in some way since RFB and D had their great big bulky green re recorders. Um, and now it just seems like everything is so accessible and e easy to get and, you know, I don't have to carry around some big old clunky thing. It can fit into whatever te technology I use which is really important for some people who may see disability as a little more st stigmatizing. This is just something, this isn't special, this is just there and you can use it if you want to. Excellent point. Um, Bookshare.org, maybe people could raise their hands. Uh, well, I guess we, we yeah, let us know if you know about Bookshare. All right, a lot of people do. No, but we still have some people that don't. Yeah, I love Bookshare, and this is probably one of the main places where I get my text and where I do most of my reading. Um, I pretty much, God, have I read a book book? like a hardcover book. I don't think I've read one in years, but I've read tons of stuff thanks to Bookshare. Um, and they, and I'll, I'll let you go ahead and explain because you have better technical language around this. Well, Bookshare is working to basically get everything into alternative format. Um, they started out with a strong focus on people that were visually impaired and blind, but they have um, now expanded to uh, be free for anyone with a print disability. So that's um, a visual impairment or a learning disability. And uh, so the range of materials from them has grown and is growing every day. Um, and Bookshare, when you sign up for it, they also give you access to reading tools. So I haven't used um, the Bookshare web reader. Nina, have you used the, any of these tools? I have, but I mostly use it on my iPad because of the portability. So you can get the book just kind of in a plain vanilla text format. Um, and so read to go is an app that lets you bring your Bookshare books onto your iPad. Um, again, you'll be seeing uh, and hearing the words at the same time. It'll be highlighting. You can control the reading speed. Um, and Nina, you said you, you normally speed things up? Oh yeah, I speed it up a lot. Um, at first, I thought I would have my speech <laughs> set. Slow. <laughs> but for me, I have a working memory issue, so that is my lowest score on the IQ test. So by the time I get to the end of that sentence, I forget what I read in the beginning. So it's not helpful whatsoever. And so what I've done, and when we talk about when this is specifically where I've done it, is I speed it goes up, it goes blah, 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 blah. 
and then I have a, like a second and a half at the end of the sentence so that I can absorb that. And for me, reading fast is the best way. Um, and when I read without an accommodation, I think my reading speed is at 110. But when I use technology, whether it's Read2Go or any of the other ones, my reading speed's like at 300. So it's a lot less boring. Um, that's a really interesting point. I've never heard anybody describe listening to the sentence quickly, but then giving themselves some extra time at the end of the sentence to absorb what they just heard. Yeah, and not every single technology has that. So I don't think Reach a Go has that. But if any of you create any kind of software, you should really consider that in there. Because for me and my auditory learning disability, that's helped me a lot. Great. Inspiration. Um, I love inspiration. <laughs> OK, tell us why. <laughs> OK, because you can do so much with it. And I take all my notes on it. And also, when you have LD, you don't really think in a linear way. And some of us do. But for me, I don't whatsoever. And so I may have an idea over here, and another idea over here, and another kind of tangential one. And so I can plot all these things out. And then I can see where they connect with each other afterwards. And the super cool thing is, is that you can put pictures on it and code it in, um, in your own way. So that if you are using it as a study skill tool, which I did when I took my licensing exam in psychology, I coded everything on, on, on inspiration. Um, and it was really helpful because I go to pictures instead of words, which is really common for a di di dyslexic. Um, so it was really helpful in that way. The other way that it's really helpful is to write. So whenever I'm about to write a paper or write anything out, I will plot everything out on inspiration, try to connect it, try to fill in some of the gaps. Because sometimes when it's done in a linear way, like a traditional essay, I don't see where the gaps are. But on inspiration, I, I am able to. And then you click a button, turns it into an outline. Then you click another button, and it puts it into Word. So the flexibility of this tool is really great. And it's cheap. Wonderful. So we're going from inexpensive to the most expensive. Yes, this is the Cadillac of text-to-speech for a person who has dyslexia. This or occurs well. And so this one uh, is about $1,000 on the Mac anyway. And um, I think what's unique about it is that when it scans, you can scan a book or any material, and it holds on to that original format while it's doing the OCR and, and reading it to you. Yeah, for me, that hasn't been especially helpful because I like the, it, it, it's the thing that I like about inspiration or like about when is that the, the, the example here that you have, I can convert that into, a, what do they call it, like a visual um, a, a outlet that fits my needs. So I, I'm not sure if I have it, but I have very topic says sensitivity like symptoms. Um, so something like you are seeing on the screen here, which is words on a white background, I would push a button and then it would put that onto a blue background. And maybe it would be at a Arial font, because that's my favorite font. And then also it would um, have all my speech settings and I could make the words either close together or far apart or any of that stuff. 
So here's the uh, web page for, for the product. Um, the speech is very good. It has a talking dictionary and a talking thesaurus, which is something that you might not find otherwise. Um, word prediction if you're writing. They've added in homophones. And uh, so that's the expensive the expensive option. Well, and also there's a ton of voices on there. And what I always tell people when I pre pre present this is that if you want to listen to Jane Austen with an English accent, you could. So there's just so many possibilities, but you but, but you pay for them too. Great. So Read Please is an older um, reading program, works on a Mac. Well, they're hoping to bring it out for a Mac. It's a Windows product. And because they're not um, supporting it right now, it's free. And you like that yeah. for shorter? You know, it doesn't take up a whole lot of space uh, on my computer. I think it copies and pastes maybe five pages at a time. So if I'm just reading a quick e e email, um, in a lot of times academics, they write very long-winded, convoluted e emails. So this comes especially e e in, e in handy there. Um, and so you know, you, you, you just do a quick copy and paste. And you can't edit or do any of those things that you can do in the Chrome application. But for quick stuff, it's really good. And uh, I read and write. This is a, an iPad app that's text-to-speech, as well as word prediction. Um, how are you finding this? Well, I just downloaded a low last week, but I'm really excited about it because you because it is a word processor. Um, and, and someone may say, no, it's not. But for me, in terms of the way that uh, I, I use it it, it, it is. And because I can copy and paste things into it and manipulate it and read it out loud, that is really great to have on my iPad. The visual thesaurus. Yeah, a student of mine sent me this last week, and it just looks so cool. And I don't, uh, maybe you could fill us in on what it costs, but um, I think it's free uh, initially. But it just gives such a good, um, a good uh, visual example of the words that that you could use if you are trying to replace a word because it does it in terms of con concepts. Um, so that's really nice. Um, Visual Thesaurus has been around for a while. I'd be interested to know if anyone um, participating in this webinar has used it. Um, it's, I think it hasn't caught on because they're not giving it away. I think if they gave it away and just pushed ads at you, they would get a lot more users. Um, but it's not unreasonable. It's three dollar. You get a 14-day free trial, or it's three dollars a month if you just wanted to sign up for a month, or it's twenty dollars a year, and that includes some other tools as well. Um, what's very cool is that you put in a word, and it'll give you all these connections to other words, and then you can click on those dots and follow um, the other connections. What I would worry about is that you would get involved in following the words, and you'd forget about what it was you were going to write originally. It's yeah. kind of a, a distractor. That is a good point. So you really have to match it with the right user, because someone with ADHD who's very linguistically oriented may love this, but they may not, you know, get get, get the task at at 
at hand done. So we have some other tools for writing that you use. Um, just being able to record what you want to say and either writing it yourself later or having somebody else transcribe it for you. And there's a microphone app that comes on your iPad. There's a little utility that comes with Windows called Sound Recorder. And on the Macintosh, you can use QuickTime Player. Yeah, and what I've done but, when I've tried to, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, um, do you feel silly walking around talking to your iPad? No, because when I do it, I kind of do it in the woods. <laughs> so, <laughs> and hopefully, no, 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 no one's around. Um, and so that's oftentimes the way that I need to write is not sitting down at a computer. Instead, if I'm writing something of real um, con content, I need to be m moving around. And I need to um, really think and then, then um, t talk it out and then walk again and move and then do it. And then so what I do is I record maybe five minutes at a time, and, and that's even a longer time. Um, into a recorder, and then I send it to a friend of mine who then ch transcribes it, and then she sends it back in like a week or something, and then I sit down and I attempt to uh, edit everything. Um, there's a question about Dragon Recorder. Does it allow you to import the recorded file into your, oh yes, I believe it does into your Mac or PC, and it'll do the um, text to speech, the speech to text conversion later. If you've um, trained a file with Dragon Dictate or Naturally Speaking. Now, for me, um, and I haven't used Dragon for myself in a long time, other than on the iPad. And on the iPad, I think it's a different story. but if I did the same thing, I would be concerned that because my stuttering is so inconsistent that it may not catch certain words and then going back and uh, editing it would be really hard for me to do and frustrating. And so my editor or the person who is transcribing kind of takes some li li liberties in um, in in punctuation and grammar and that kind of thing, so I can, so I'm able to skip that step. Yeah, writing just using Dragon is is kind of an art form, and to get all the punctuation in there, sometimes you have to learn some specialized technology. Um, so it's all depending on your voice. The Dragon Dictate that comes free on an iPad works very well for me unless I'm excited, and then it doesn't work at all. Um, there's a brand new uh, version for the paid version, and they're saying what's better about it is it works better without training, but of course training is, is how it works the best. And, well, then, and it's really uh, hard for people who have, have dyslexia to do that ch training because you have to read it. So that is also a difficult thing. <laughs> Excellent point. OK, so the final option would be Siri on uh, a brand new iPhone. And because it's cloud-based speech recognition, um, for some people, it's incredibly accurate. Yeah, and I've actually used it. And you know, if I, you know, sometimes I will talk like this to make sure that I don't stutter, and that helps me to um, put it onto my phone in a way that we know if it's short, then 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 the that'll work. Okay, uh, we have an iPad tip. Uh, for typing accurately. When you're writing on your iPad, it um, does this autocorrection. 
and you, if you turn on the speak auto text, then you'll know when it's choosing the wrong words instead of the right words. And this one is for everybody. I found this incredibly valuable. Yeah, you just need to turn the sound down if you are in a meeting because you know it'll do it on Word, it'll do it for your e emails and all of that stuff. And so I've been embarrassed because my iPad starts to say the words that it's auto correcting. And um, this one uh, is actually not just the iPad. It's everywhere um, to save keystrokes. I have to type the word disabilities all the time, and I start misspelling it after a while. And so now I just type DIS, and it automatically expands into disabilities. So on the iPad, we've given you the um, way to do that. And on the Mac, uh, you go into tools and, and mess with the autocorrects settings. Yeah, no, and once you had told me about it, I went through and I started to um, do some of those. So that's a great tip. So Audacity is something that you told me about. Yeah, um, the way that I recorded those workshops that are a voice over a PowerPoint slide, I recorded those originally on uh, uh, Audacity, which I use for my PC, and then um, then the um, and then Eric, who's in our continuing ed department, will merge the those with the slides and then you see and and then you saw what we had created out of that. And I'm sure it it, it just makes a voice file, so I'm sure you, you can use this in lots of di different ways. So you can use it um, to extract the audio if you want to put it on an iPod um, and just listen to the audio. Oh yeah. That would probably be a great idea if someone's meeting with a tutor, they could like, and I'm thinking of someone who has a visual impairment, um, perhaps they could use this and then they can um, put study tips or almost like an auditory flashcard on it. And uh, Kathleen has noted that you can read the book chapter and then save it as an MP3 file and take it away on your player for later. Oh, that's, I never th thought of that. That's a really great tip. Um, this, this is a gener generic tip for everybody, not just <laughs> students with learning disabilities, but um, you know, Google has bought YouTube, but they have two very different search engines. And um, actually, YouTube is the second largest place that people go to search for information, which is fascinating to me. Um, but the uh, I did a search using iPad and communication, and on the left, I got results from Google, from YouTube, and on the right, I got results from searching using Google. When you search on Google, you can just specify videos. You, you only want it to look at videos. And um, most of the results from Google video search were still on YouTube, although it is a broader search. Um, and there was only one overlap between those two searches. So the tip is don't just go to YouTube and search for videos. Also use Google's video search because you're going to get different information. In the way that I use this with um, st students or even c clients is if they are kind of getting stuck on a certain c concept, um, for example, some of the psychology t diagnoses are really hard to understand if you haven't seen an example. And typing it in to 
Google, you can look at what you find on the web, so what's on Wikipedia, or you can see a video, and the videos, I think, are really important to the learning process, especially if you have LD. Um, and then also pictures, um, and I think Google Google Images is a great tool, and whenever I'm unsure about something um, that I'm having a hard time understanding, I see if it is represented as a picture so that I can understand what the concept is there as well. All right. So PTSD Coach is a free tool from the National Center for Telehealth and Technology. You know, and I actually learned about this from a student of mine who did a presentation on it. And it, I, I think, like, it was made for people who experienced PTSD because of their military service. But I have recommended it to um, clients and students who are dealing with anxiety and PTSD. So it's just not for people who are, are combat vets, but I think it can help a lot of people. And it has an assessment thing, it does some interventions, um, and you know, it's not in place of a, a therapist, but I think it's a great tool for people in the middle of the night so that they have something that can uh, guide them to make them feel better. And uh, the meeting finder. Yeah, this actually, this was my idea and, and so I thought, well, what if people who, who were in AA and NA could just say, I am here, where is the closest meeting and when? So I typed it up and it ends up someone else already thought of the idea. So here it is. Um, and so um, it finds where you are and just it, so in that way, it's kind of like Yelp, where Yelp will say where the closest bakery is. This will tell you where the closest AA NA meeting is, and that's uh, Alcoholics uh, Anonymous and Narcotics uh, uh, Anonymous. So this was my favorite tip of yours, was forwarding older email to yourself so that it gets to the back to the top of the list. And I've started doing that one now. Oh, good. Because <laughs> I used to flag them, but then I'd have to remember and go back looking through the flag. Oh, I never go through my flagged items. And then you're also color coding your calendar items. Yeah, because I have five different e emails. So I know that my purple is my school stuff. I know that my, um, I think it's peach, is my office stuff so that I know where everything is and I can keep track of it. Um, and, um, and sometimes the colors help and sometimes not. It's just important that um, everything syncs in with each other. And my purple seems to sync the most out of everything. So. And I realize that I'm doing this with Google Calendar because you can make multiple calendars for yourself. Mm. So I have one that helps me coordinate um, when I can play volleyball with other people. And I have one that's about things that I'm doing with my family. And then I have another one that's work. And I can look at all the information combined or I can look just at a single, a single um, calendar, a single set of activities. That's great. So you were telling me about Formsight. Is it, it's, it's got yeah. a free or a slightly paid version. I pay about $10 a month for it. And one of my, um, one of the aspects of my job is that I am one of the people who co coordinates books in accessible formats. And I do that across 
I don't know, seven di different campuses. And so it can get kind of overwhelming because I'm getting the emails from everybody. So what I do is I say, this is a one stop. You go here, you type in the book, you type in the exact ISBN because I need that, and you type in the exact pub publisher. And then it translates all of that into an Excel document. And then I copy and paste that into my master list and then as soon as I get the book done I black it out and it's done but it's still being tracked so at the end of the year I could say well I've done you know 80 books or whatever. So let me clarify do this does the student who needs the accommodation put it in or does the teacher put it in as something that a student will need? It can be either one. And you could do it with Google Docs. That's but a good point Giovanni's making. Can you form with that, though? Because the important thing for me is someone else builds out the form, so all I have to deal it with is the back end. OK, so that makes life easier for you. Yeah, and as a dyslexic, I'm not going to type in an ISBN number right. And that's also where some of the disability coordinators might do it um, for a student because they also have a difficult time doing that. Great. Well, that's the end of our, uh, our list. Um, We'd love to see in the chat window if, or via email if there's any webinars that any of our uh, participants would like to do or topics you'd like to see. Or you could tell us uh, what your favorite tip was from today. Um, we also have uh, at atcoalition.org, I'm trying to track all the webinars that I can find, all the free webinars that are about assistive technology and access. So I'm constantly updating that. If you have any that you want to publicize, you can send them to me. And right now there's 13 more in April and for May. Um, and if anybody has any questions, they could type them in as well. Did we forget anything, Nina? Oh, there's so much. <laughs> I know there is so much. Just for the people, so for the people that didn't know about Bookshare, that's going to be, you know, they're going to need to go look at that. And then the, the whole world of finding um, materials that are already electronically available, that's, we could do a webinar just on that. Yeah, and then also that is helpful for students who also have a physical disability, so they may not be able to turn pages and manipulate books and that kind of thing. So it's great to have, you know, five, 500 books on their computer. Um, John has asked, for those using Bookshare and higher ed, are you finding a lot of the books that college students need? It's very hit or miss. Um, and so it's the school's responsibility to, to find those books or to make those books accessible. And Alliance International University has a library where we have the, 50 plus books that we've made accessible so that if a student in San Diego, because we have multiple campuses, needs that book, then they can access it off of there instead of having to go through me. Um, and then also students from all over the country can as well. And Corrine had mentioned Access Text, and that is the first place I look for everything. Um, there are multiple pub publishers who are on that, so I can copy and paste the ISBN from the form uh, on form site and go into that and request the book. Some of the books don't have some of the pictures and the graphs and that kind of thing, so um, it doesn't always go well. Um, but but on the whole, it's a really good service. Great. Okay, I'm gonna. 
Oh, and recording. also we should plug the a AMX database. They are really good and they have so many excellent tra trainings at the high tech center um, that anybody who is just getting into technology should totally t take a look at, 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 at what they have. Where is that? Um, and, um, it's in, does anybody know? It's, it's San Jose-ish. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it's C Cupertino. So it's the high tech center that's for the community college system? Yeah, but they they are really great about getting information to everybody, and publishers are publishers, um, so um, they they have a really comprehensive list of publishers and where to contact them. So when I order a book, I go to Access Text, and then if that doesn't work, then I go to the AMX database. Great. John's asking a question, Nina. Oh, sorry, I didn't push it down. Um, Do you have a license for Read and Write Gold? No. The license that I have is for Win, and that's, you know, the Win caught me early in my adjustment to to uh, uh, assistive tech. Um, and the way that I look at it is you have Coke, you have Pe Pepsi, you have RC and Cola, um, and it's just, uh, a, it's all the same thing. You just have a preference for one over the other, and the same for a win, Kurzweil, and read and write gold. <laughs> 